We continue now at the top of Daf Chof Beis Amud Aleph and Maseches Rosh Hashanah. This is Rosh Hashanah Daf Twenty Two A. The mission has said, "Maisa Sha'avru Yoser May Arboim Zug." There was once a story where more than forty pairs of witnesses were traveling on Shabbos in order to testify that they saw the new moon. Ve'ikvon Rabbi Akiva v'Chulu and Rabbi Akiva held them back. He said, "There's no need to be Mechal Shabbos because there's plenty of witnesses for the new moon." And the Gemara says, "Tanya, we learned in a bray." So Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says, "Chas v'Shalom Shur Rabbi Akiva Ikvon." Chas v'Shalom that it was Rabbi Akiva who held up the witnesses, Ela Shizvar Rosha Shel Geder Ikvan, rather, it was Shizvar who was the head of an area called Geder, he's the one that held them back, Veshalach Rabbi Gamliel Vahuridu Migdulaso, and Rabbi Gamliel sent a message and took him down from his position because he did this. The Gemara continues with the Mishnah, Avu Beno Sharo Esa Chodesh, what if a father and a son, they see the new moon, so Yelchu, so they should go together. Lo Shemitz Darfin Zem Zen, it's not to say that they're allowed to join with each other and be witnesses, because relatives are not allowed to be witnesses together. Rather, they should both go, because what if one of them should become apostle? So then you can have another one join the second one, and that's going to be a good set of witnesses. Rashi over here says, They're going to ask the person questions about how the new moon looked, and maybe he makes some kind of mistake, and so they apostle him. So again, you'll have the other one, and he can join with another possible kosher witness who comes to, uh, who comes to Bezdin. Rabbi Shimon Omer, the Mishnah continues, Rabbi Shimon says, Avu v'no v'chol ha-krovin k'sherin le'edas ha-chodesh. A father and his son are all relatives, they're kosher when it comes to edas ha-chodesh, so they can actually testify together. Amr Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi says, Maisa b'tuvya harofe, there was a story with Tuvya, the doctor, sh'roa s'achodesh b'yerushalayim, he saw the new moon in Yerushalayim, hu uveno ve'avdo m'shukhra, it was him, and it was his son, and it was his slave that was freed. V'kiblu ha-kohanim oso v'yas b'no. And the Kohanim accepted the testimony from him and his, and his son. In other words, they accepted relatives. But they said that the Evid was Pasul. And when they came before Bezdin, they said the exact opposite. They accepted him and his servant. But they said the son was Pasul because they said that relatives are indeed a problem. And the Gemara says, Rabbi Levi, Rabbi Levi says, My time at Rabbi Shimon. What's the reason of Rabbi Shimon that relatives are kosher to testify when it comes to Edith HaChodesh? Because the Pasuk says, it says that Hashem said to Moshe and Aaron, who were relatives, and he said, this is the new moon. So what it means to say is, it means if you ever have to testify, it would be kosher, even though you're relatives, you can testify together on the new moon. And the Rabban respond, that's not the meaning of the Pasuk. What the Pasuk means is, Eidus zu This testimony is given to you, meaning you are the people who should act as a Bezdin. We need the highest authorities in the land in order to rule on the issue of whether of whether the new moon is indeed Rosh Chodesh or not. So it has nothing to do with being Edom. It has to do with the fact that they are being the Bezdin, that is the court, that is verifying that it, that it is indeed Rosh Chodesh. And Rashi over here says, The opinion of Rabbi Shimon is, it's kosher for you to testify even though you're brothers. And the other opinion is, no, the greatest authorities of the generation, they're the ones who are given over the Eidos HaChodesh, meaning, they're the ones who are going to receive the testimony. And proclaim the month sanctified. But the Pasuk doesn't mean to say that relatives are allowed to testify. And the Gemara continues at the two dots, quoting the Mishnah, Amar Rabbi Yossi, Ma'isa b'tuv Yaharofe, v'chul Rabbi Yossi said there was a story with Tuv Yaharofe, and the point of the story was that relatives are not kosher when it comes to Edus HaChodesh. And so the Gemara says, Amar Rav Hanan bar Rav Hilchasuk Rabbi Shimon. Rav Hanan bar Rav says the Allah is like Rabbi Shimon that relatives are kosher. Amar le Rav Huna le Rav Hanan bar Rav, so Rav Huna said to Rav Hanan bar Rav, Rabbi Yossi, Umay, so you have the opinion of Rabbi Yossi, and you have a story, both indicating that relatives are not kosher. The Ata Amar Hilchasuk Rabbi Shimon and you're saying that Allah is like Rav Shimon, that relatives are kosher, doesn't make any sense. So Amar Lois said to him, What are you talking about? Many times I said before Rav, the halacha was like Rabbi Shimon. He said nothing to me, he didn't correct me. So apparently the halacha is like Rabbi Shimon. Amar Lois, so he said to him, hey, chitanis, But how did you learn? How did you learn who said what? Amar Lois, so he said, I had it actually backwards. I had it that Rabbi Shimon was the one that's saying that relatives are not kosher. So Amar Lay, so he said to him, lo Amar Lach, velo Midi. That's the reason he said nothing to you. Since you had the opinions backwards anyway, it turned out that you were correct. 
And the Gemara says, Amar Tavi Bere de Mori Tavi, Amar Marukva, Tavi, the son of Mori Tavi, says in the name of Marukva, Amar Shmuel, in the name of Shmuel, Hilchasak Rabbi Shimon, that indeed the halacha is actually like Rabbi Shimon, that relatives are kosher when it comes to Edus HaChodesh. And we will note over here that the Mesorah Sasha says, Svarim Acherim Ein, there are some other texts that have Ein, meaning Ein Halacha Rabbi Shimon, that the Gemara means to conclude the halacha is not like Rabbi Shimon. The Gemara continues with the Mishnah, Elohein Absul, and the following people are possible when it comes to Edus HaChodesh, Hamasachik Bekovia, someone who plays with dice. A person who plays with dice is gambling, and that's considered a gazlan on a drabonan level. It's not an actual gazlan on a doraisa level, because that's someone who outright steals something, but it's a gazlan on a drabonan level. Umalve Barib is somebody who lends with interest, also considered a gazlan on a drabonan level. Umafricha Yonim, somebody who races doves, also a kind of gambling, a gazlan on a drabonan level. Vesochre Shvi is also somebody who does business with Shemitah produce. You're not allowed to do business. Rashi over here says, Vesochre Shvi is Osin Schora Bepeiro Shvi is. Person makes business with the peros, with the fruits of Shvius. And Rashi continues, because the Torah says it's to eat it, but you can't do business with it. Because of the fact that all these people are people who are suspect that they would violate the law just because they want to gain in terms of money. So they're suspect in terms of the fact that they might testify falsely and get paid for it, get bribed. And that's why we don't trust them to testify in these cases. And the Mishnah continues, Vavodim and also slaves, they're also puzzled when it comes to testifying for the Edus HaChodesh. Rashi over here says, Vavodim Sule Do Raisu, that's a Psul Do Raisu. Kalvachomer Misha, that's a Kalvachomer that women are also not allowed to testify. Kedamran Bavavakama, like we say in Bavakama. And the Mishnah continues, Zah, Klal, here's the rule, Kal Edus Sheino Isha Ksherola, any testimony that a woman is not kosher for, Afhein Einon Ksherola. So to everybody in this list in the Mishnah is not kosher for as well. And the Gemara says, Ha'isha Ksherala, but if you have testimony which a woman is allowed to testify for, Afein Ksherala, so to everyone in this list in the Mishnah is also allowed to testify for. Amar Ravashi, and Ravashi says, Zoso Meris, this proves, Gazlan de Divreyim, when you have someone who's a Gazlan on a Darabonan level, Ksherin la Edus Isha, that person is kosher to testify when it comes to Edus Isha testimony on behalf of a woman to allow her to remarry. Rashi over here says, Ha'isha Ksherin la testimony that a woman is allowed to testify for, Kegon lahoyed al misas adam lahasi es ishto. For example, a woman is allowed to testify that a person died in order that the wife should not be, be an aguna, in order that she should be able to remarry. The al-sota shenitmes bestira shalotishta also, a woman is allowed to testify in a sota, let's say in a situation where she was in stira again, she was in a situation where she was in seclusion with another man, so you can testify about that sota in order to stop her from drinking the bitter waters. Le'edos isha, for testimony for a woman, again, nase, like we said, to allow her to remarry. V'davka gazlan de divreim. Rashi points out, this is only true the, the people in the list that are a gazlan on a drabonan level. Avon gazlan do raisa, but somebody, let's say, who's a real gazlan on a Torah level, to chatzif lav or befarhesia, right, right in front of somebody is going to steal something. Lo echshiru chacham leedusisha, that person can't testify for edusisha. Ve'av al pisha echshiru eso evet ve'eso isha de psul do raisa. Even though that they allowed an evet to testify, they allowed an isha to testify who are normally psul do raisa when it comes to testifying, but they are not going to allow someone who's a gazlan on a do raisa level. The Gemara continues with the Mishnah Mish let's say somebody sees the new moon but he's not able to walk he can't go to Bezdin we can take him on a donkey even on a bed this is talking about even on Shabbos let's say there's a, there's a, there's a concern that maybe people will ambush them on the road Rashi says the Baitusim and the Kusim they used to ambush in order to, in order to mislead the Chacham when Rosh Chodesh was they would try to stop the witnesses so then then when they're taking this individual to testify they can take staffs with them they can take sticks with them in order to fight back, weapons. And if it's far away, they can take food with them as well. Because on a travel of a night and a day, if that's the distance they have to go, we're allowed to be mechal Shabbos when it comes to testifying for the new moon. You can go out again and testify for the new moon. Like the Pasuk says, These are the holidays of Hashem that you want to do in the proper time. So we need to get the Eidos HaChodesh when Rosh Chodesh 
dishes in the proper time in order to fix the Yomim Tovim in the proper time as well. Hadron Aloch Arbor Rosh Hashanah. This is the conclusion of the first parak of Maseches Rosh Hashanah. If you're enjoying these videos and this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. And you can take a look at the description box below to see how you can support this channel. And we will now begin the second parak of Maseches Rosh Hashanah. The Mishnah says, Emeinon Makir and Oso. Let's say a person comes to Bezdin to testify about the new moon and they don't recognize the person. They don't know that he's someone who's trustworthy. So the, so the halach is, Mishalchen imo acher ido. You send somebody else with that person to testify on behalf of that person, someone they recognize, and he can say, he can vouch, this is a person you should trust. Rashi over here says, Emein makir no so emein bezin makir no so eid. Emnamen v'kashru. Bezin's not going to recognize this person if he's trustworthy, if he's kosher. So Mishalchen bezin shabiro acher imo. The bezin in his local city will send someone with him. Lahoyer olev lefnei bezin hagodol shem mekadesh esachodesh. To testify to the, the great court that's going to sanctify the new moon, that he can testify this person is someone you can trust. And the Mishnah continues, In the beginning, they would accept the testimony for Edus HaChodesh from anybody. They wouldn't need to verify that this is a trustworthy person. However, But then, the Baitusim, they tried to sabotage the process, and so therefore it became difficult to know who to trust and who not to trust. So So they made a Takana that we can only accept the testimony from people we recognize as being trustworthy. And the Gemara says, My Acher, what does it mean they have someone else that they send with them? Chad, it sounds like they're sending one person. And we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Chav Beis, Amud Beis.